Welcome back to Gaelic Games Fan TV. It's the preview show for this weekend's All Ireland Senior Football Championship action. Six games to preview, six games to break down. Certainly a lot to discuss. Derry versus Donegal obviously stands out as the game of the weekend. McGuinness versus Hart. Um, so much history, obviously, when those two managers have come up against each other in the past. And Derry Donegal, massive rivals. So very much looking forward to previewing that one. Mayo and Roscommon, certainly a heated rivalry as well. That goes without saying. We'll be discussing that. Kerry and Cork, maybe the forgotten rivalry of uh, of the weekend, but those two are playing each other this weekend as well. And we will be previewing the other games in between as well. You've obviously got Throne playing Cavan, Galway versus Sligo, Waterford versus Clare, the three other games there as well. Joined by Seamus Brady from On Clare. Seamus, how's things uh, with yourself? Um, I mean, the weekend gone, maybe not the best weekends of action and everything else, and I think that's been very well discussed by now, but this weekend, like some some decent games anyway. Derry, Donegal, and Mayo Russ Common, two games that really stand out. Yeah, Ron, thanks for having me on again. And this weekend looks like it's gonna be a belter. Um last weekend was, yeah, you're right, like one of the weirdest weekends, I think, of, of GA action that in my memory anyway, that you didn't know what to make out of it. That like Dublin on paper were coming out of a victory against, you know, one of our biggest rivals and like historically, definitely not recently. Um, but historically, um, we were coming out with a 16 point win and being like, not a great performance, lads. <laughs> like, and then the, the vibe around it wasn't one of a great performance you had as well. Just a strange mix of games, especially the down Antrim game was a weird one, definitely one to be forgotten. Uh, apart like the only thing that was notable was there was someone in Antrim's background team that thought he was Rocky Balboa. Then, <laughs> like, there was other games as well. Uh, very interesting. Kildare nearly, you know, had probably the biggest embarrassment of the last decade for them. Um, and like they nearly threw the game away against the side that have got relegated to Division Four, which would have been serious inquest then into what is actually going on. On top of you know the seven defeats out of seven in the league, so a very interesting uh, weekend. Very odd. This weekend looks like it'll be a little bit more straightforward. I think you're guaranteed that no matter what comes out of this game, Jimmy Guinness, Mickey Hart, Dunny Gold, Derry, I think you're going to guarantee fireworks with that one. Mayo Roscommon is always very interesting. Kerry and Cork is definitely better in a better state than Dublin and Meath uh, is in now. Like Cork always up their game for Kerry and they always give them a good lash no matter you know what state Cork are in like I distinctly remember Cork being in Division 3 yet still playing quite well against Kerry me or the other like they roll over to Dublin um, but Cork and Kerry should be a good game I do expect Kerry to win but it should be interesting and then you've got Waterford 70 minutes away from the Sam Maguire Cup that I don't think they'll make it but Waterford 70 minutes from away from Sam Maguire football which would be absolutely extraordinary yeah, I think that'll be one of the stories of the year if, uh, if if it did come to fruition. But yeah, we'll start with Derry against Donegal uh, in Celtic Park. Um, certainly, I think in terms of championship games so far in the football championship, I think this is the game that that really sort of, um, I think when the draw was, was made, I think everybody very much looked at, at this fixture and thought, when is that on? Because I need to watch it, you know, that way. And yeah. um, look, it mightn't be maybe the most exciting game of football uh, in the world, like, It'll be interesting to see how Jim McGuinness approaches this game as as Donegal manager. Like you don't really hear much about Donegal. They've been like I think Jim McGuinness is, uh, you know, all the talk about media bans and everything else. That there is a lot of unknowns about them. Um, in Division Two, they sort of went went about their business very quietly. They probably were very attacking at the best of times, but I think that was also got to do with the opposition of teams that they were playing. So. This is going to be interesting. What type of game plan does does Jim McGuinness bring, and and how do Derry act on that? It's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. I think like when it was announced that this was the game, I actually thought I think this is the one game that Derry can actually be caught in in uh, in Ulster. So a big two months break from Monaghan have to supplement my intake by watching the under twenties playing I'm at right now. Yeah, of course the under twenty championship is on like the, that's a brilliant competition to watch as well in its own right. Um some stars for the future to watch there. Like look the reality is is that going into this game you've got the division one champions against the division two champions. And you've got to understand why this game is so big, you have to look at the dynamic between Jim McGuinness and Mickey Hart. Like when Jim McGuinness came onto the scene with Donegal in 2011, was his first year with them. Like the first team that he wanted to take down was Mickey Hart's Tehran. 
And like, if you read his book, Until Victory Always, if you watch the documentary, Jimmy's Winning Matches, it's all about Mickey Hart and it's all about that Tehran team. That Tehran team that had won three All-Irelands in 03, 05 and 08. And that had won actually back-to-back Ulsters conveniently in 2009 and 2010. And they were the kingpins. They were the ultimate kingpins of Ulster. And actually the 2010 Ulster Championship, we talk about the Ulster Championship being the bastion of the provincial system, and it is. But in 2010, the Ulster Championship was crap. Everybody rolled over to Tyrone. Nobody gave them a challenge. They played Monaghan in the Ulster final and they rolled them over with ease. And if you watch Chase and Sam, which is a documentary about the 2010 Championship, it's brilliant. Like Leinster was far more exciting than Ulster back in 2010, which is a crazy stat. Connacht, Sligo were looking like they were going to be Connacht champions and then they end up losing to Roscommon. Like how times have changed. But back to the point, Tyrone were undisputed kings of Ulster. And Jim McGuinness, the first thing he wanted to convince his players of was that they could beat Mickey Hart's Tyrone, that they could be Ulster champions. Hmm. And that's what's interesting now is that we have a similar dynamic here in that Derry have won back-to-back Ulsters. Yeah, Mickey Hart was a manager for either, but they very much have carried that momentum on under him. They're the current league champions. They seem like this unstoppable juggernaut, especially in Ulster. And Donegal now with a fresh manager in like Jim McGuinness. And who does he have the target on? Only Mickey Hart. So one of the reasons why this rivalry is so impressionable definitely on the fans and why it's captured so much of our imagination is because we've been here before and the question is can it happen again because jim did turn mickey hart over in 2011 with donegal donegal hit them with a late burst got the goal got the winner and then everybody was saying you know that was the win that really turned it for donegal that was the win where they were like oh something's clicking here something's working here we're really on to something now and the rest is history. All Ireland champions by the end of 2012, back to back Ulsters. So for Jim, if Donegal can beat Derry, like the levels of confidence that that will give them will be unmatched, especially considering the momentum that Derry are carrying and how much they put into the league final. It'll be interesting to see like how fit the lads actually are. I know that they've had three weeks rest. You know, they should be in good nick. Donegal, it didn't feel like the league final took as much. Derry, certainly not. And um, so this one is really interesting. Do you know, like the honest truth is going into this game, I'm like, if you're saying, okay, Shay, put your life on it. I'm saying Derry. If you're saying put a bet on it, might be tempted to go for Donegal. It's a real banana skin. Mm, it really is. Yeah. Like, and uh, Keane says here, Donegal to overcome Derry by a point or two and to march on an Ulster while the Rossies, to beat Mayo and reach the Connacht final, playing in Dr. Hyde Park will be a plus for uh, for us common too. Yeah, we'll certainly get onto that in a, in a moment. Uh, Farney Fan TV says Derry 213, Donegal 112. Kieran says Jimmy ain't winning this match, perhaps a year too soon, but it will be close, I'd imagine. Have a sneaky feeling about Donegal this year. Upset incoming Derry 114, Donegal 212. Is this Derry's toughest challenge, do you think, in the Ulster Championship? Like, you've obviously got, got Tyrone on the other side, Tyrone and Cavan on the other side of, the, of, of um, you know, wait, waiting in the semi-finals, but Tyrone have obviously struggled at the best of times this year, very inconsistent. You've got Armagh, but again, like Armagh were beaten by Donegal only a couple of weeks ago. Um, are, are Donegal Derry's closest challengers in Ulster? Could this be Derry's Toughest test, potentially? I think so. I think Tyrone are, right now, Tyrone are very much in an early stage of rebuilding. Like, their team against Derry was a team for, like a team of kids, a like, team of lads that are onto the panel for their first year of action in the Tyrone team. Players like Ben Cullen, players like Niall Devlin. That is their first run in the Tyrone team. And I was shocked at how many senior players are missing in that game. I was like, it's a local derby. It's like a, an absolutely huge game because you got Mickey Hart playing against Tyrone, something that we never thought we'd see, especially not with the Derry manager's hat on. And yet Tyrone seemed like they just rolled over in that game. I mean, the late goal from Conor Glass, it was like, what is going on here? Tyrone just seemed to have no fight in them, which is something that I never thought would be the case in that game because usually they were the team that outgrit and outfought everybody else. So 
it's very interesting to watch that dynamic. I don't think Tyrone can beat Derry this year. I think there's something about it for Donegal that just, for me, it just, something's lining up where I'm like, I think this is on. Do you ever get a feeling that like you just think, like even Wicklow Kildare, and I know that Wicklow didn't beat them, but going into that game, you just got a, like a sense like this is on. There's a there's an upset on here, and it was on. That game, I don't care when anyone says it. I, I seen your TikTok. Wicklow left that behind them. That game was right there for the taking. And it's just sometimes you can tell if it's on. I think this is on. I really, really do. Like I, I think that Donegal will be right there with them. I would be very surprised if Derry beat the brakes off Donegal. Because mm. like only once have we ever seen Donegal get annihilated, and that was against Mayo in 2013 in the Atlanta quarterfinal. Hmm. Yeah, especially under McGuinness, all right. It, it very rarely happens, in fairness, like especially with how his team, how well defensively his his team is set up. Um, in, in fairness, but yeah, One like I mean, you have to consider our man is McBrearty. How fit is he? Yeah, um, I, think, I think he might be missing. I think he might be missing. Like Farney Fan TV says here, lack of. All the reliable players for Nigal will be their downfall in this game. No, McBurty is a mega loss. Yeah, like I haven't heard McGur- McBurty's not playing, but I haven't heard he is playing either. So we don't really know, to even be honest. Them in the might, league be, might be on the bench, but even at that, do you know? Yeah, and then in the league final, they had no Owen Bon Gallagher and they had no, um, there was someone else missing. I think was it, it wasn't Morgan. He was there. Ryan McHugh, was it? Yeah, that was the one. Yeah, he was. Yeah, Ryan McHugh. Yeah, I remember there was there were two others that were missing because I remember on the preview for TG Car they were only talking about McBrady and I was like McHugh's missing, like Owen Bon Gallagher's missing. Like they're two huge players, especially in terms of they're massive for Jim. What is Jim's ultimate best weapon, which is fast movement? Like Bon Gallagher's pace is insane, and then McHugh is such a crafty operator that like those two players. You know that when McGuinness came back, Owen Bon Gallagher and Ryan McHugh would have been very important to how he wanted to set up. Darrell Boyle also wasn't there in that league final. What's his fitness level like? Is he available for this game? Because he was really impressive in Jim's first few games as Donegal boss. He looked like he was going to be a player that would shine. So what state Donegal are coming into this game in is going to be very interesting. Yeah, and maybe the last thing before we we give a prediction on this game, like... It kind of, like this rivalry almost has done a full 180 in many ways. Like you think about it, Donegal for years were the favourites against Derry for, for large parts. Um, and probably when Jim McGuinness was back in charge as well, like funny enough, his first Ulster final win was actually against Derry. Um, and, and Donegal were actually, um, both sides were going in on a bit of an Ulster, Ulster drought, but Donegal were going in as slight favourites. Um, so like with Derry having looked as good as they did in the league, beating Dublin, like you feel like there's no pressure really on Donegal and all the pressure really here is on Derry because like if if let's say Donegal get beat, unless they get hammered, but let's say they get beat by two, three, four points, a lot of people will say, well, Derry are one of the best teams in the country. They're expected to win. So in many ways, like there is pressure on Derry. There's a lot of pressure on them here. And I think that suits Donegal. That suits Jim McGuinness's sort of template in the sense that you know, he can get, like, if he's going to go full blanket defence and get a lot of men behind the ball and, you know, make life as difficult as possible for Derry, I think everybody would understand it given how good Derry have looked this year. Well, that's that's a great point that you make as well because it's one tactic that I think he has used in the past. I think he used that tactic in 2011 against Dublin in the all Ireland semi-final on top of the blanket defence. I think he was also thinking, this team is under such pressure to get to an all Ireland final that if we park the bus, make it as difficult as possible for them and give this overwhelming sense that it's happening again, it's falling apart, Dublin aren't going to make it to the All-Ireland final. They've absolutely bottled it. But that Dublin team under Gilroy did have the mental resolve and did have this deal to break the dam and get through and beat Donegal in that All-Ireland semi-final. But it was a tactic that definitely worked. And there were stages where, you know, Colin McFadden, do you remember that shot that he took? just mm. after the second half started and it went over the bar. If that had gone into the net, I don't think we're coming back from that, man. And maybe the next decade looks at very, very different <laughs> to how it ended up mm-hmm. unfolding. Like, it's tiny little moments like that. And in this game, Derry have a lot of pressure on them. And especially after the, the league, a lot of people will say, 
you know, oh, well, that's it. Derry are definitely going to go and win the All-Ireland now. And I think that's actually why they didn't celebrate the league. I thought it was a very kind of cold moment from Derry to very much shake Dublin's hand in a way to be like, this isn't the one that we want. Cool, we'll pick it up on the way, but we're coming for the All-Ireland. I think that's why they didn't over-celebrate it. Like you saw when Mayo beat Dublin in 2021 and acted like they'd won the All-Ireland final. And Tyrone were just waiting for them in the final. I think Derry were very much being like, no, no, we will see you again. And when we beat you in the All-Ireland, then we'll celebrate. Because you looked at how Glass went up, lifted the trophy, and then they brought the trophy down. Minute Dublin missed the last penalty, Derry just shook hands with them. Good game, lads. Well done. Mm. See you in the future. It was very much one of those moments. I think that was a very calculated decision by Mickey Hart and by the senior players in Derry to slow down the hype. Because think about it. If they'd lost their rag, after winning that and been like, you know, <laughs> posing for team photos left, right and centre and posting it everywhere. The hype that is already behind them would have gone to a whole other level. And the pressure going into this game would have hit a whole other level and they would have been expected to blow Dunning all the way. You talk about Pat Gilroy, Jim Gavin. One of the key things they always wanted to do with Dublin was keep the hype down. Don't, like, remember the five in a row? 2019, up to the All-Ireland final. And they would just not address it. Uh, like, five in a row, nah, not talking about that. <laughs> that. Hype is a dangerous thing. And for Derry, they cannot let the hype get too much because Donegal are going to be very tricky. And as you said, Donegal have nothing to lose. And, like, if Donegal get out of this with a two-point defeat, nobody's going to bash them on social media and say, oh, like, actually, people will probably look at Derry and say, oh, they only beat Donegal by two points. Yeah. Like, are they really going to beat Dublin and Kerry? Because people expect so much from Derry now that if I was Donegal, I'd be talking a lot. Mm. I'd be saying, oh, I thought you were I thought you were the best team in Ireland. How come we're still in the game? How come we're still level with you with 10 minutes to go? I thought you were going to win the All-Ireland. How come we're ahead? Like, things like this that they haven't actually won the All-Ireland yet. They're not the finished article. And somewhere along the line, they've been running for so long, like literally from match day one of the Allianz League, they've been going 110%. There's mm. bound to be a slip up somewhere. And my thing is, is that if they slip up here, Donegal, I think, will be waiting to catch them. I think this is a dangerous, dangerous game for Derry. What do you think in prediction uh, wise then? Do you think, do you think <laughs> Derry will be yeah. here or, or, what, or what do you reckon? That's as funny. As much as I think it's a dangerous game for Derry, I still think that they are going to win. I've been very impressed with them. And like throughout a fantastic league campaign, they have also added to their squad. Cormac Murphy's come in, he's looked amazing. Dermot Baker has come in at the defence, looked like he's been there his whole life. Connor Glass and you know, Garrett McKinless, Shane McGuigan, Brendan Rogers, Chrissy McCaig. They all look amazing. Connor McCluskey looks in the form of his life as well, always bombing forward from the defence. Like, there is just an unbelievable amount of talent in this Derry squad. Jim McGuinness will hit them so hard. Like, there's no doubt about it. Jim will go for this game with Donegal. He will want to beat Mickey Hart because Mickey seems to be the manager that he likes to get one over on the most. You know, you can see that in how he set up his Donegal teams to play against Tyrone. But if I was pushed, pick one. I will go with Derry. I think Donegal missing McBrarity is massive. I think then we, we're not sure how fit McHugh is. We're not sure how fit Owen Bon Gallagher is. We don't know if Darrell Boyle is going to be in this game. And just those absentees, I think, will be enough to pull Donegal back a bit. And I think Derry will get the win. There we go, yeah. Um, Kieran says David McGrew and Michael McGleanan rumoured to have left the... Tyrone panel, the mass exodius continues. Yeah, that, that, that's interesting. All right. Uh, Aaron says, I think Derry will win by two points. Yeah, I think I'll go with Derry just about to, to get over the line. I do have a feeling, though, this game will be in the melting pot going into the final couple of minutes. And we spoke about that Kildare and Wicklow game. Do you know, like, I don't think it will be to the same extent, obviously, like missing open goal chances and everything in the final couple of minutes. But I think Donegal might have a couple of moments where we look back and think they could have won this. Um, but I think Derry, Derry will still just about have that edge. But um, I do think it'll be very, very close indeed. In fairness, uh, Cavan Tyrone is obviously the next one at Breffney Park. Um, I suppose, as Kieran was saying there, a few more players 
rumored to have leaving the, the the throne panel, um, which which does seem to be continuously happening. But um, could you see Cavan getting anything from this? Like they obviously beat Monaghan, they upset the odds a little bit there. Throne, uh, as every Throne fan is, or most Throne fans have told me since the Dublin game, you know the league didn't matter, the championship matter. So, you know, looking at that logic, Throne are going to come out, come out flying out of blocks. You'd hope so, um, because this is a dangerous game for Tyrone. I really think so. This is another one that, remember what I was saying earlier about Donegal Derry, that like you just get a sense this is on. I think Cavan will have that mindset about this game. I think Cavan will sit there and think, Do you know what, I think this is on. I think Tyrone are there for the, the taking. When you look at how inconsistent Tyrone were in their league campaign, like for every performance, like the Mayo one where they got a great victory, you know, for every performance, like the Ross Common one, where they got a vital victory, there was a performance like Dublin where they were awful, and there was a performance like Derry where they just didn't turn up. So they have to hit the ground running against Cavan because if Cavan get a good quarter under the belt, I think Cavan will kick on. Like I, re I really, really think this is dangerous for Tyrone. Like you have Dara Canavan at one end who is in the form of his life and right now is arguably the best forward right now around he's literally unbelievable and i think if you're to make an ireland team i think he has to be in it right now um like he's just so hard to handle so hard to get a grip on but cavan very much have a system worked out and they beat monaghan who beat tyrone last year so why on earth can't cavan go and beat tyrone mm -hmm. cavan beating monaghan last week will give them huge uh, huge confidence sorry because they haven't done great against sorts of teams over the last couple of seasons. And Raymond Gallagher coming in as boss, like getting that victory under their belt will be massive. The only thing that you can look at from a Cavan perspective is slightly worrying is, especially in the first half, they were so reliant on Paddy Lynch. It was like literally, if he did, if he has an off day, Cavan are in the bin. There's no way Cavan are going to win this game if Paddy Lynch has a bad game. A lot rests on his shoulders, but he is in fantastic form, which is something that is very good news for the Breffney men. It's a dangerous one. Um, I think I'd probably still go Tyrone, but again, it's one of those, if they don't show up 8 out of 10, Cavan are taking them out. Yeah, Fernie Fan TV says Tyrone win after extra time, Tyrone will bottle it a few times, but will stumble over the line in the end. Macy says here, Tyrone are a funny side. They should win on paper. But a good Cavan performance could see Throne fall apart. And Gaelic Guy says two Ulster upsets, Cavan 3 9, Throne 1 13. Yeah, like one game that stands out to me is Throne Westmead last year, where the game obviously finishes as a draw in the final game in the group stages. And you would look at it and think Throne, like Cavan and Westmead have been at a very similar level for for numerous years. So, like, Cavan can take a lot of confidence confidence from that, in fairness. And given Tyrone's inconsistency, Cavan do have a chance. I do agree with you. Like, I think Tyrone will still have enough to come through. I think they, they have the players to do it. There's absolutely no doubt about it. But it just is that way of Tyrone right now where they are so inconsistent. You don't know what version of Tyrone is going to turn up. It, like, no nobody's doubting Tyrone's ability. I think it's just the fact that they're so inconsistent at the best of times. They are. They're so inconsistent. And like, because when you look at it, like coming to Crow Park to play Dublin, I still would have never thought Dublin would have beaten them by that much. And you have to ask, like, how on earth has that been allowed to happen? Like, I don't care if it's the final round of the league. You know, you don't go out like that. You're like conceding 518 uh, to 12 points is shocking. And their inconsistencies are there to be pondered because like last year they beat Donegal and looked awesome doing it and then turned up against Kerry and sorry didn't turn up at all against Kerry and um, Westmead should have beaten them and then they've had amazing performances so it's it's really really confusing but uh yeah I think that they have enough talent left to get the sorry to get the victory over Cavan but I think if they don't, serious questions need to be asked. Because as that comment said, McLean and David Mulgrew are two cracking footballers. And the way that they've dropped off, the way that so many other players have dropped off, it's it's hit basically what Tyrone had was Tyrone had like almost an icing on the cake team when they won the All Ireland. And it's like they've had the cake taken away from underneath them. It's like they have had what made that team so good and what makes every team so good is competition for places. 
what made Toronto so good in 2021 was the competition for places. You had literally Tina McCann, Ronan O'Neill, David Mulgrew, Lee Brennan, Conor McKenna, Paul Donaghy, all like at the heels of the lads that were starting. You had Derek Hanavan coming into the side, Denny back then as well. And the truth is, is once those lads left, once your David Mulgrew is left, Niall Sludden is left, now all of a sudden Brian Dewar is in a position where if Conor Myler has a bad game or if Kieran McGeary has a bad game, he has to play him because he doesn't have the same backup that he used to have. Players that were ready to step into the position and take it aren't there anymore because players like Paul Donaghy and players like Conor McKenna weren't getting enough game time. So they're like, right, I'm, I'm off. I'm not sticking around to be a bench warmer here. Like, <laughs> what's the point? I'm, I, and the reality is, is teams have struggled to do that. But you look at like teams like Limerick and the Hurling, you look at teams like Dublin and the football in the 2010s, they were able to keep players on board who weren't starting games. And that does make the difference. And for Tyrone, it made a huge difference in them winning the All-Ireland in 2021. And the fact that they've lost that is, in my opinion, why they've fallen down. Because now they're in a position where if one of their main men has a bad game, they have to keep playing them consistently because they don't have the same options that they had before. Yeah, Sam says here, the league is pure uh, codology, man. Look what Wicklow did in the league, Tyrone. The same, they were mints in the league as well. Tyrone will blow Cavan out of the water. Kieran says, a stark statistic, we haven't been thrown in the championship since 1983, and that was the last time Cavan played them in a home fixture. Um, so there we go. Uh, Max says, Killian Brady, uh, I think, can handle Dara Canavan. Um, yeah, that's 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 an interesting one, yeah. Uh, Farney Fan TV says, Tyrone 2021 all Ireland victory was their apocalypse um what do you think and then in terms of a margin of victory like how close do you think it will be Toronto by two that's what i'm thinking i think tight Hmm. they get the win yeah i think i think i'd go with that as well in fairness moving across to the games in the west uh roscommon versus mayo uh i suppose it's always fierce um there's there's certainly no love lost when it comes to roscommon and mayo down the years obviously roscommon Beat Mayo in the championship last year. Mayo got their revenge, obviously, in the league earlier in the year. Interesting enough, like Mayo seems to have a much better record at the Hyde down the years, and Roscommon tend to have a much better record at McHale Park. Like it seems to be a little bit strange. Like in recent years, Mayo always tend to be Roscommon away from home, but Roscommon always tend to be Mayo away from home. Like both both of these two actually tend to struggle when they're uh, when they're at home. But Mayo are obviously going in as favourites. But we know what happened last year when Mayo went in as favourites. Can the Rossies do it? They do have home advantage. I think Ross Common might well do it because you th- you look at someone like Davy Burke, right? And the one thing that came across in a lot of his interviews was he does have a chip on his shoulder when it comes to proving people wrong. And especially about Ross Common, like you, I mean, the amount, like he'd come out and he'd be like, oh, we've done 65 training sessions. Like you can tell he really wants to prove how serious they're taking it, how good this team can be, how competitive this team can be. So I really think that relegation from Division 1 would have hurt Roscommon. Like, I really think that. I think that would have really hurt them and it really would have hurt Davy Burke as well. So I think he's going to get his players pumped up to the absolute max to try and get them ready for this game because, <clears throat> because I think like you look at how much it would have hurt them to get relegated from Division 1 because... Again, it was like Roscommon had been in that cycle of going up, going back down, going up, going back down. And he looked like he might be able to break the chain by keeping them up that one year. And then they slipped back down eventually. If he had to put this year as, you know, back to back, Division One, they stay up again. Then you would have been thinking like, all right, Roscommon putting a bit of a run together in Division One now, but they slipped on there. And I think he'll be desperate for a bite back. He'll be desperate for an answer from his players. And there's no better answer than beating Mayo in the hide. Yeah, Tom says, I think Mayo should have enough for this, but it won't be pretty. And Gaelic Oy says, Mayo will annihilate Roscommon. They've been a shambles all year. Roscommon 10, Mayo 116. Roscommon 111, Mayo 116, says uh, Farney Fan TV. There were some interesting comments earlier about Roscommon. Actually, Gavin was saying here, Roscommon under 20, hammered Leitrim. Uh, Connacht final spot secured also. The big dogs survive. 
with Semi Slot as the Sligo under 20s uh, knocked out Mayo. Yeah, Sligo beat Mayo 14 to 9 in the Connacht under 20 championship. So fair play. The Sligo uh, under 20 fairy tale continues uh, as it has over the last couple of years. So fair play to both of them. Um, like you would you would fancy Mayo, all right, all right, but Mayo have a weird record in, in Connacht. Like they've only won two Connacht titles since 2015 and like i don't know what it is about mayo but they seem i know obviously they didn't get to the league final this year but they seem to always do quite well in the league then they seem to take a break in connacht and then they go hammer and tongs to try and do something in the in the all Ireland series um so you just never know what mayo is going to turn up in connacht like the only two times they've actually won connacht since 2015 was the two covid years do you know what i mean mm-hmm. so it's been it's been a little bit unusual mayo and connacht certainly has and like i think if if one thing summed them up, I think it was last year where they won the league and then lost to Roscommon immediately after. Like the people were saying, God, Mayo are different this year, man. Mayo are gonna win the All Ireland. Uh you said that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then they uh they lost to Roscommon. And look, don't get me wrong, like there was a good reason to be on the hype train. Like Mayo had looked great in that league final, like they really, really had um the former players like Ryan O'Donoghue the former players like Matthew Ruan was absolutely extraordinary and you know they beat Galway in that final and were the better team on the day and then you know you're going in thinking well surely they're going to win Connacht and Roscommon were just waiting for them Roscommon were just like we're uh, chilling right here and we're waiting for you <laughs> and they caught them in the long grass and this is what I'm talking about is that this year Mayo seemed to not really want to win the league that's kind of the vibe that I got it felt like McStay had kind of learned his lesson from last year. And if he has learned his lesson from last year, then Mayo will win this game. So I will lean to Mayo. Yeah, I think so as well. I'll go with Mayo ever so slightly in terms of a margin of victory. What are you thinking? Um, I'll say five points. I think they'll get a goal that would put them relatively comfortable early on, and then they might kick on at the end. Yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll go three, three or four points. I think um, again, as you said, like Russ Common just haven't looked all right all year. And I know, as we said before, the league sometimes can't be a barometer. But Russ Common, in my opinion, like their focus should have been or would have been to stay up in the league. They weren't able to uh, to achieve that. Um, but look, we saw what happened last year when Russ Common went in as underdogs. And fairness, Macy says Mayo to blow Russ Common into the middle of next week. Something funny happening. In the in the Rossi camp, can't see them winning this Mayo three fourteen. Russ Common eighteen points. Max says I can't see Russ Common stopping Fergal Boland and Ryan O'Donoghue. Kieran says Mayo v Russ Common. Doctor Jekyll v v Mister Hyde. Um, Gavin says weirdly it happened again last year. Russ Common sadly only beat Mayo when Mayo win the league, but Monaghan went down, so Voodoo's eventually break. So you never know. Yeah, look, you know, you do never know. And look, I'm sure Davy Burke. We remember his interview last year at full time when he said nobody gave us a chance, everybody doubted us, blah, 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 blah. I'm sure he'll be, you know, that, that same speech will be given to them Roscommon lads in the build-up to this game. Absolutely no doubt about that. Sligo and Galway is the uh, other game. Uh, as we were saying before, the Sligo under-20s um, seem to be going very well. Um, you couldn't imagine to be any of them involved in, in this game. I don't think any of them can be involved anyway. But um, Galway, look, will be favourites. I think it's one of them where we all fancy Galway to win. Sligo probably have been closing the gap on Galway and, you know, Mayo ever so slightly. Like, they have been improving. There's been no doubt about that. They beat Westmead recently. Can Sligo, you know, and Westmead have been fairly competitive with the likes of Galway and whatnot in recent seasons. Like, do, do Sligo have any chance here? Um. I don't think so. I'm not trying to sound like mean. I just think if you look at God, how how comfortable sorry Galway beat them last year in the Connacht final, have they closed the gap that much in a year? I don't think so. But are they getting better? Absolutely, they are getting better. And you look at players that have come into the side, like the injection of Canis Mulligan and other players that have come in that are you know young, full of energy, full of you know determination as well. And like I think when you look at the attitude of these lads, like Canis Mulligan pretty much sums it up. And I actually agree uh, with Gaelic guy there. I don't think it will be a battering, but I think Galway will win. I think it will be something along the line that Galway win by about seven points, eight points. But I think Sligo might actually make it difficult for them at a certain stage. I don't see it being a 20-something point battering like it was last year. 
because Galway have been worse uh, this uh, this stage this year than they were this time last year. Like we've had no sign of Shane Walsh for a while now, no sign of Damian Comer, uh, and it's very difficult to know where they're at. No sign of Killian McDaid. Peter Cook's taking the year off. So, like, they're not as good a team as they were this time last year. That goes without saying. Uh, and Sligo are better. So, it will be closer. But I still think Galway will have too much for them. Uh, Galway, like, I think Matthew was saying this, that, like, Galway are forced to be developing a panel. Like, they're forced to be using players that they've never used before. And then you see even Tom O'Callaghan coming on against, uh, sorry, coming on against London, looking great for a few minutes and then getting injured and going off. Like, and he, you know, Parry Joyce must have been ready to absolutely punch the wall like, after seeing Callaghan go down injured. Because um, there's another one gone, like another one by Sados, another injury. And in this game, I think if Galway get through this game with a five point victory without any injuries, I think Joyce would be taking that to the bank. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's the main thing, especially going into going into a Connacht final. Keen uh, here reckons Sligo will beat Galway. Uh, Sligo to beat Galway. Markovic Park will be rocking on Saturday. Um, yeah, fair play. Look, I'd, look, I've nothing. I've no ties to Galway or Sligo, but look, I love an upset in um, in, in Gaelic games. You know, you oh, probably don't, you don't get too many of them. Um, in, in fairness, and I know Dublin probably have a strong reason for that, but. Um, it'd be great to see. It'd be great to see Sligo go and um, get the job done. Uh, come on, the Yates County also says Keen there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kieran says Galway's come away with a comfortable win and a few more injuries. Yeah, probably will be the case. And Gavin says end the from our ref was saying Shane Walsh was training again for Galway. If he's there, comfortable win for Galway. But if he's not, it could be tight. Yeah, look, I, I could see this being like five or six. Like, I think Galway will be comfortable, um, especially with how they play as well. Like, they're usually very well set up, very well organized defensively. They, they, they don't concede too much when you look through their games in the league. So, I could see this being like an 18 13 or like a, a 16 to 10 point victory or, or something of that nature. Like, I think Galway probably come through up by five or six in the end. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think it would be something that. They'll, I think they'll miss a lot of chances. Sligo will make it difficult for them. I think at half time it will be relatively tight. Then Galway will just kind of manage it out. I'd say Galway by about five, five or six. Yeah, I think so. I think so as well. Then in Munster, Kerry versus Cork is the uh, big one to discuss here. Obviously, huge uh, historic rivalry down the years between Kerry and Cork, but much like. Dublin and Mead is probably a rivalry that has uh, been very one-sided over the last 10, 15 years or so. Maybe the difference, though, is that Cork do always tend to give Kerry a, a good run for their money. And as you were saying earlier, you think back to 2020, Cork were Division Three champions um, and, and Kerry were obviously bidden to, to win the All-Ireland. They just won the league and Cork came there and, and beat them. And obviously COVID was a mad year and everything else. There were so many shocks and surprises that happened. 2019 as well, Cork very competitive against Kerry last year in the group stages. That was a very, very close game as well. So, look, Kerry are massive favourites and they probably should win by 10 plus or at least eight or nine. But Cork just have this thing playing better teams like beating Roscommon, beating Mayo last year. They do seem to have this thing where they raise their game playing better sides. So Kerry should win, but it mightn't be a foregone conclusion as people might think. They've set themselves up to be like that, Cork. Like for for a few years now. Like I was saying this to to Matthew on his show. That I, like I think Cork are set up as this team that are very good at sitting in, especially against the favourites, and being like, right, you come get us, hmm. and we're gonna sit back, absorb the pressure, hit you on the counter a few times, and it's gonna be a like a fight of a game. And that's why Cork find it hard, in my opinion, when a team does the same thing to them. Because Cork usually go with the same starting 15 against, say, a West Mead or something. And if they're willing to sit back and be like, okay, you're the favourites, come get us, Cork don't really know what to do <laughs> because they don't really have like players that are very creative, like Blake Murphy, have left the panel because they're not getting enough game time because this is the way that Cork have you know, gone down. They've gone down that we want to be competitive against the big teams. Route, so creativity isn't really... Yeah, like there's not really a high priority put on that. It's, you know, players that are willing to dig the heels in and work hard and make it a scrap of a game against these teams. And 
Kerry, like they've done that really well against Kerry. I find out a lot. Like last year, that penalty was ridiculous <laughs> that was given uh, for David Clifford. And if that penalty wasn't given, there's an argument that Cork could have won that game. And then you think back to 2020 when Cork did beat Kerry. That again, that was a similar game where Cork dug their heels in, made it a scrap. The conditions definitely helped them that night. And Cork smashed and grabbed, but got the win. And Kerry were there for the taking that night. Uh, Kerry have had some you know, glorious days. 2021, they really put it to bed. They buried Cork in that game. So they, they do have that in the locker. But I think Cork will put it up to him again. I think there's a lot of pride involved here. I think Cork will not want to lose this in a heavy fashion. I'd say Kerry by seven if I was to pick. I think Kerry might put the burners on in the last quarter. But I think Cork will definitely make the first half very difficult. Yeah, Gaelic okay, like says Kerry 19, Cork 113. One not impossible. Remember last year, took a penalty for Kerry to beat Cork last year. Um, and Gavin says Brian Hurley isn't getting any younger. 2012 last title in Munster for Cork. They seriously need to win, considering they should have bet Kerry last year as well. Do you think that's the thing, though? Like the fact that Kerry and Cork were so close last year, and the fact that Kerry nearly did lose that game against Cork, like you think. Jack O'Connor and Kerry, like surely they can't let this happen again because it, it does seem to be a running team every couple of years. There's a there's a near you know there's a close shave or there's a win for Cork. So you get the feeling that Kerry surely and, and Jack O'Connor like they'll want to come flying out of traps and and really put to bed any chance of an upset in this. Because yeah, yeah, because you have to remember as well, like Dublin absolutely battered Kerry in the league. And I know that people would be like, well, what does that have to do with it? It does. Trust me. Jack O'Connor at the end of that game was livid. You'd imagine. <laughs> like, losing to your biggest rivals in Croke Park by that much. And the reality is, is how that relates to this is now championships kicking off. And you better believe that Kerry's goal is to win the All-Ireland. You have to start with intent. You have to send out a signal that we're not playing around here. And if they batter Cork, in this game, it does send out a statement that we're coming for the All Ireland, and then um, I think Kerry will go to do that. I think that they will win by seven, which is why I picked that. I think Cork will make it difficult for them. But I think Kerry might have a, a flashy and impressive third quarter or something, and then manage it out from there. So I'm saying Kerry by seven. Yeah, I think so as well. I'd, I'd go with Kerry by by seven points. I think they should have enough to get over the line. And then last but not least, Waterford versus Clare. As we were saying, saying before, uh, Waterford with the historic chance to um, you know, put themselves into the all Ireland series, which would be absolutely wild. But in all seriousness, Waterford beating Tipperary was a, was a surprise in, in some ways. But at the same time, Waterford and Tipperary were both down near the bottom of Division, th- uh, Division 4. We're talking about Clare nearly got out of Division 3. I know they've lost a lot of players and everything else, but surely Clare win, and, and they should probably win quite comfortably as well, if we're being honest. They should. They should, but it's like <laughs> hope, man. Literally hope. That's what Waterford are coming into this game. I think we're, we're coming into this game being like, could you imagine if Waterford, the team that have finished bottom of the Allianz Leagues, like literally rock bottom, without a win, make it into the Sam Maguire Cup? Could you imagine the scenes <laughs> if they imagine, were imagine water for Dublin and Crow Park water for Dublin and Crow Park <laughs> you think me Dublin and Crow Park was bad <laughs> like, oh God. Yeah, yeah. and let's be honest that game would be played in Crow Park you all know it <laughs> you wouldn't play yeah. it down trip to Waterford would be lovely it would be good yeah be good crack very yeah. rare Waterford, like, Waterford, never play Waterford really um, mm-hmm. but yeah in this game I would be stunned if Waterford get within five points of Clare. I, I think Clare are still moving at a higher level than Waterford. And look, the reality is Tip are right down there with them, as you said. Like, I wasn't stunned, actually, that, you know, Waterford won that game. It wasn't something that absolutely shocked me. It was definitely, like, a, a bit of a surprise. But it wasn't mm-hmm. like, a, what the... Like, it was very much like, oh, wow, okay, good win. Um, but it was nowhere near the level of like when Carlo beat Kildare or when Cork beat Kerry in 2020. That was like a result that you never saw coming. Like there was definitely a vibe again that like this upset was on for Waterford and they took it. This game here on paper, yeah, Claire are missing 
11 players that were key players last year. They're missing their long manager, Colin Collins. It's a new manager in Mark Fitzgerald, and it's a very new team in, but it's a very new Clare team that should have got promoted out of Division 3. Uh, the only thing that stopped them was that goal decision against Westmeath. Um, apart from that, they were they were great, uh, apart from the down game, sorry. And, um, yeah, so like they've definitely done very, very well to cope with the absentees. I'd say Clare by about 10, if I had to go brutally honest. Yeah, I think so. I think so as well. In fairness, uh, what Gaelic Ice is Waterford eight points clear to twelve. Sorry, it isn't happening. And Farney Fan TV says Waterford to eleven clear sixteen. The upset is on the cards. There you go. There you go. More of Tom O'Connell doing the celebration. Jesus, yeah. I think I think there'd be a bank holiday in Waterford. I think if they if they manage <laughs> to put imagine they be clear and then they be Cork in the hurling as well. Jesus, imagine if the that. footballers last longer than the hurlers. Imagine That's if Davy Fitz is early to get knocked out once there and the footballers still have to play the group stage of the All Ireland. That's crazy. That would be that, insane. That would be, that would be. Yeah. Gavin says only two wins and Sam McGuire status over down in Westmead and clear it would be insane for Waterford. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, it would be quite crazy if Waterford managed to pull it off. So yeah, look, that wraps up the uh, the games in terms of player of the week and better of the week. What would you what would you go for? Um, are, like with bet of the week, are you talking underdog bet? Yeah, or and anything. Re- I mean, like a lot of the, like I, I'll take Donny Garby and Derry. Like that's probably a bit of a an upset. Yeah, week, probably, I but. think there's a few that you can go for. I think Donny beating Derry is is right there. Cavan beating Tyrone is a very good shout. I think Ross Common beating Mayo is mm. actually a mm. decent bet. Um, I'll go with. What, which one out of them do I think is the most likely? Cabin beating Tyrone, I'd say. Mm. And then player of the week. I think if that was to happen, we'll go with that. We'll say that that does happen. Uh, Paddy Lynch. Yeah, no, I, I I could see that to be fair. If Cabin were to be Tyrone, I think I think Paddy Lynch would need to have an absolute stormer. Yeah, like better week. It, it is hard. Like there probably isn't re- like, I think Donegal beating Derry is probably the one that I think I think could happen potentially. Um, and that's that's just because of how good Donegal have looked this year. And in fairness, like you're looking at Russ Common, but they're not in form. Cavan could be Tyrone. There's no doubt about that. But there is a division separating them and the rest I just couldn't see happening. So um, in terms of player of the week, I'd, I'd probably go probably go Brendan Rogers, you know, for Derry. Like, I just think he'd be such an integral p- player. Like, Derry are probably going to have so much uh, possession of the ball. They're going to be looking to make things happen. And, and I think Rogers could be very, very well integral to doing that. Um, so there we go. Uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this up here. Uh, Seamus, thank you very much for jumping on. Um, everyone make sure to check out on Clitha when you get a chance uh, as well. Uh, I think we'll be live over there tomorrow as well, discussing some um some sort of solutions and issues with ideas the... yeah okay do you want, you want me to pitch it yeah go for it go for it okay i'll pitch it so tomorrow myself aaron and matthew so me are from on aaron from gaelic games fan tv and matthew hurley from gaelic stats and we are going to do a video in which you call it the ideas that we think could be solutions to certain problems that we currently face in the GA. So we broke it down into five different categories. We have category one, respect and the fans experience. Category two, the structure of the GAA. Category three, rules and discipline. Category four, the GAA calendar. Category five, content and promotion around our games. So we're gonna do a live show. Anybody that wants to get involved in the comments, it's gonna be a show where we're gonna very much look at the live comments and get involved and everything like that with the people that are chatting to us and just shoot ideas around and see we have ideas down we're going to discuss them because i know about you, i don't know about you Amber. i'd say you're on the same page it's one of my pet hates people that just point out problems and don't try to come up with solutions we've yeah. come up with a few good solutions and a few good ideas from other sports from the lgfa from Komogi that i think we should just implement into gaelic games absolutely absolutely yeah so yeah we'll be on live at five tomorrow i think so make sure to to get yourself on over to on cliff uh, and we'll be uh there to discuss it all so yeah cheers anyone who's tuned in uh hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already and we'll catch you all soon